Hey guys, it's Drudder. I'm back. It's the 2nd of November today, and I haven't done a video except for the last couple of days. I did a couple of quick videos uh, for about a month because my grandmother was quite sick and my family pretty much um, delegated me as the person to take care of her. So anyhow, she's now out of hospital and we weren't sure if she was even going to survive. Chances weren't that great, but um, you know, as much as we like to complain about the system, um, the system saved her life. <laughs> There's really no two ways about it. She would not have lived if she didn't get the surgery that she got at the time she got it. So, um, sh I'll, you know, just spare you the details, but it was an abdominal surgery. And um, with some lifestyle changes, she is now released and will make a recovery don't know how long she will make it. Um, she's pretty old, but um, an amazing person, and I'm really glad to still have her around, especially because that's what she wants. She doesn't want it to be over now, so um, I just think that it's up to the person to decide, um, you know, if they want to keep living or if they don't. And um, she made her choice, and she made it quite clear to me when I talked to her, so... Uh, I was happy that it worked out the way that she wanted, and we'll see what happens from now. But uh, it's just really good to have her back and to have her out of the hospital, and she's now recovering at home with some other family members that are helping her out now. So that frees me up to return to my life and uh, do videos and, you know, get my rent paid and all those other good things that we all have to do. And uh, so that's what I've been doing the last couple of days, and I hope you enjoyed the last couple of videos I put out. Uh, if you didn't see them, why not have a quick look at those? They're about one minute each. And uh, anyhow, we are back and it's back to the silver. So uh, I'll do a little bit of chart analysis in this video and I will uh, also put a couple of clips I took over the past few weeks. I think one of them's from mid-October, uh, just wrapping up um, some gardening stuff. Uh, you can always skip that clip if you're not interested and uh, we'll go from there. Hey guys, it's October the 16th today, although I don't know when I'll be actually putting this into a video and uploading it, but um, sorry for that humming sound. Um, somebody's vacuum cleaner, I think, or something. Anyhow, I'm out in Grandma's garden and uh, we just had about three or four days of straight rain after a very, very dry, in fact, record-setting dry um, late summer. July, August, and September, and even the first half of October were very dry, and there's actually still um, dangerous fire conditions in much of BC here, but um, this little segment is not about that. It's about uh, what happens when your tomato plants get too much rain. I just wanted to show you what happened here. As you can see, the skin has split open on a lot of these, and uh, I had about maybe a third of my crops still hanging on the vine uh, when this occurred. I was sort of braving the frosts and whatnot, but the frost didn't seem to be in the forecast, so uh, I left them up. Uh, unfortunately, rain is equally as dangerous to tomato plants when uh, they haven't had much rain lately. So it's pretty simple. The tomato swells up with water and the skin, which is much less flexible than the interior of the tomato just uh, pops open to relieve the pressure. And uh, it doesn't harm the tomato plant all that much. The tomato doesn't really care. Uh, its seeds are still safe in there and it'll still fall off the vine and rot on the ground and sprout again in the spring, just like it would have if it was beautiful and intact. But uh, it kind of screws things up for us humans who like um, beautiful looking food. So um, I have saved the rest of the harvest and um, as you can see there's no more tomatoes on these plants, so they'll be coming down when I have a minute. And uh, here's a shot of some of the other tomatoes that didn't make it, but uh, what was left on the vine was about a third of my crop, and of that about half was destroyed. So here's the other half here. Bring that inside and let it ripen up in some newspapers and throw it in a drawer and uh, just the natural process will ripen these and they'll be ready in a couple of weeks and I'll do another batch of canning for the winter. Definitely November. This is looking east out of Vancouver. 
on the number one highway there. As you can see, the fields are emptied and the mountainside is turning quite yellow. Nothing like the big storms they had on the east coast, of course, but yeah, fall is definitely here. Hey guys, I'm just cutting up my beefsteak tomatoes that I grew this year, and lo and behold, when they ripened, they didn't ripen on the plant, I had to take them inside and ripen them in some newspaper. Um, but the color changed to the same color as my um, Black Prince tomatoes. Grab me one of those for comparison. I've got a big bag of them here. See, exactly the same coloration with the green tinge on top and the purple colored, um, brownish purple maroon sort of colored bottoms. Now these Black Prince tomatoes are a fairly well-known variety and I got them off of somebody a few years ago and I've been growing them ever since, but apparently last year my beefsteak tomatoes somehow took on the uh, pigment of my Black Prince tomatoes. I guess I created a hybrid without even knowing it. And so I have these wonderful, nice, big beefsteak tomatoes, uh, which grow on a very hardy plant and uh, did very well, as a lot of beefsteak tomatoes do. But um, they've taken on the pigment of this. So I cut open another one that I had and uh, tasted it, and it was quite good. It's just like these smaller Black Prince tomatoes. It doesn't have a lot of sugar in it, but it has a very strong tomatoey flavor. And um, I've collected some seeds, and I will collect some more seeds from these two as well. So I don't know if anyone's interested in uh, a black beefsteak tomato. I don't even know if there are any varieties out there like that. But uh, I have one here, and it is heirloom and ready to go. So uh, I will be giving away some seeds in a further video later on. Uh, I've been, you know, doing a lot of seed drying and preparing. So I will give away some seeds, but I just wanted to mention those now and show them off before I cut them up and put them into my tomato sauce that I'm making today. While I've been away, a few people sent messages or posted on my um, main channel page that they wanted to hear my analysis of the price action over the last few weeks since I've been gone. Well, <laughs> this is what happens when I leave you guys alone for a few weeks, eh? You just Things just fall apart. No, I'm just kidding, but um, the uh, QE3 or QE Infinity, however we want to call it, was announced here. So we had uh, a few weeks of trying to hang on and then a few weeks of just total collapse. <laughs> We've lost 15% since QE to Infinity was announced. Um, how that makes any sense, I don't know, but apparently printing unlimited amounts of US dollars from now on until the end of time means that silver goes from 35 to 30. I don't know. This is just um, what I'm seeing and I have no idea why that's happening. Um, I do know that when this happens, um, whether or not I was expecting it, it's a time to buy, um, to put it bluntly. It's a good time to scoop up some physical silver. So. Uh, not that I have any cash lying around, but if I did, that's what I would be doing with it. And uh, if you have any lying around, what you do with it is up to you. But um, I know that when silver pulls back, it's usually a good time to load the boat. This is the unemployment rate in the USA since 2008 on the left there. Um, this here is about 2009, this is 2010, 11, and here we are at 2012. So over the last few years during Obama's tenure as president, um, obviously a increase in people that are unemployed. And it uh, is now approaching 25%, which is at the same level roughly as we were at during the last Great Depression. Now, the official numbers are here in red down in the five to seven percent range and headed lower every month apparently we drop even further lower and the economy improves and more people get jobs according to the official numbers anyway but uh, yeah here's the true numbers on the same chart doesn't even overlap the true numbers in blue more like 25 percent and the data is from shadowstats.com. I'll put the link down below. I think I will leave it there for today. 
but um, I have a lot of videos planned. I keep a small uh, text file on my computer and I just add ideas to it when they come to me. And I gotta say, I have about 30 or 40 really good ideas for videos. Um, you know, the time is not necessarily there for me to produce them all, nor is the money. I don't have the expertise needed for some of them, but um, I do keep that list and I hope to produce at least most of those videos at some point. And it's, the list is always growing. It grows faster than I can actually get them done. But so, you know, you'll hear a lot more from me in the next little while. I figured I'd show you what's here in front of you. Probably piece some people wondering. That is a one gram maple. It's not an official maple, it's just some private mint that does them. Um, I don't even remember where I got that from. It was a couple of years ago I got that. And of course this is the Andean Cat. This is the uh, 2010 version. And a Timberwolf. That's it for now guys. Talk to you again soon.